A digital video and control link like ExpressLRS looks to be advancing, but flight controller and ESC technology looks to have stagnated with no new tech for a while. Would you agree? Define new tech, right? I mean, Betaflight 4.5 is coming out. It will have new features. INAV 7 just came out. It has new features and capabilities. If you mean that the hardware itself hasn't jumped ahead leaps and bounds, uh, flight controllers with new cheaper chips on them, the AT chips, you know, have come out. Um, there's only so much room for innovation in the hardware because uh, hardware changes require, that's a lot of work. There'd have to be a lot of payoff for that. And the flight it, controllers are fairly refined. Um, it also yeah, costs money. I think yeah. the biggest issue we're seeing there is cost because people want cheaper flight controllers. Like, uh, there's no solution for flight controllers. Like, Express LRS was a cheap solution, right? You slap yeah. a couple chips on there and you're good to go, and it works the same price or cheaper as you were previously paying for your controlling. Right. But, like, there are great, huge jumps in flight controller technology, like the H7. You can do full pixel SD on analog. How many people mm -hmm. are using that? No one right? wants like, it. Right. It's like nobody wants to pay that much for a flight controller and then implement it. And we've seen H7s become available from people like Dominic Clifton, and people don't order them, right? Like, it's not, yeah. there's no demand for that increase in technology that well, I've seen. And I think that's why we don't see more innovation in flight controller, like upgrades or whatever. I 100%. I 100 but the, the, one of the biggest things that is holding FPV back in terms of technological development, let's put it that way, is that people in the FPV world are extremely price sensitive. And they're price sensitive. When the last time I said that, somebody was like, well, you know, life is hard. Things are expensive. How dare you? And I'm like, like, I think I call, I may have referred to people in FPV as cheap bastards in a sort of a flippant way. And then they were, they thought that was uh, callous, if you will. Uh, but um, <laughs> uh, if it's a fact that if you have a domain where someone is willing to throw a shitload of money at it, you see rapid development. Look at, uh, look at SpaceX, right? SpaceX did really is doing really cool shit, and one of the reasons they're doing cool shit is that they threw a lot of money at an interesting and lucrative problem. Well, the people in the FPV space, the FPV space is very small, and people in the FPV space very much would like to pay as little as possible while getting the, 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 the sort of experience that they want to get. And when someone comes along and says, I have something better, everyone in FPV goes, hmm? And then they say, and it's going to be more expensive. And they go, Bleh! and then they don't buy it. And the company goes out of business, <laughs> you know? And so when you say, well, why isn't there innovation in the flight controllers in ESC space? There a hundred percent is, you know, who's doing it? DJI in drones that you don't fly because they're not FPV drones. Do you know who's innovating in the flight controller space? Uh, the, you know, the, the Pixhawk flight controller. You know, the, the Orange Cube Pixhawk flight controller with freaking or PX4 or whatever, however you say it. One of them is the flight controller and one is the firmware and I don't know. But they're, they're, those innovations are happening. There's a flight, the Orange Cube flight controller or the Holy Bro, uh, Pixar, the PX6, it can freaking do CAN bus. It can connect to CAN bus peripherals. That's innovative. Why doesn't a Betaflight flight controller do that? Because it is a free open source project developed in people's spare times for no money and no profit. And therefore, it just, yeah, it, that's why there's no innovation. But I think that's been true for a long time. Like, if you look at a beta flight flight controller today, an F7 flight controller today, and an F1 flight controller seven years ago, there's m many similarities. If you look at an F3 flight controller from, I guess, five years ago, roughly, there's like not as many differences. And one of the reasons is that we sort of refined ourselves to the cheapest, most minimalist design that does what we need it to do. And the other is that a lot of the innovation happens in the software. That's like you look at a hammer and go, why haven't hammers innovated? For the last 10,000 years, a hammer is just a big, heavy metal thing on the end of a handle. 
who's inventing new nail driving technology? And yes, I know there are some fancy new hammers out there with different technology. I've seen them on TikTok the same as you have. But the, the point is, you know, the, the, the firmware is doing the innovation and the hardware is just there to serve the firmware in some ways. Um, Captain Bry points out a digital FPV is much more expensive than analog and many, many people jumped and you are a hundred percent right about that. If it's good enough, they'll jump. If it's good enough, they'll jump. 